and welcome to PlayStation Grenade. It's been three long, long, long weeks, but finally we are back to break down all the map changes in the world of Fortnite Battle Royale. To keep this three-year-old series going, please think about using code Adamaru over Halloween. So, Fortnite Chapter 2, Season 4, Week 8. Man, time flies. Let's do this! I loaded up Fortnite with excitement, which was then trebled by this. Penny! She's got a new variant, a Halloween cat slash pumpkin skin. So in honor of this legendary update, I will don this skin today. And because it's the spooky time of year, it's time to crack out El Fisto again. The bro fist of horror. Okay, I'm totally ready now. Let's -a go! So many places to begin, but the one which I feel is the most important this season is the bromance. Eight weeks ago now, following the fall of Midas, two henchmen were left in pieces. One for Ghost and one opting for Shadow. On week three, the two had a tense face-off in a cafe in the middle of nowhere and somehow put their differences aside to form a bond expressed through dance. Two weeks later, these bros were so committed to that bromance, they moved into the hotel at Lazy Lake to hold their own pool parties, have dance competitions, and they even took out Wolverine. And now in game, the henchmen have moved over to the Hydro Dam, still together. So I stalked the two, and this is what they do, here's their story. The two can be found primarily here. They've made the old turbine slash museum into a home. The shadow dude enjoys watching TV, which looks fantastic, and the ghost guy is checking out their new gaff. Suddenly, he spots another place to live and calls his brother from another mother to come check it out. He agrees, and then slowly, and I mean slowly, these guys walk so slow, they get to the dam. In a touching moment, they take in the sights. Right in the fields, this is so touching. Hang on, I have an idea. Yeet! <laughs> Sorry, pretend I didn't do that. Back, back to the story. They finally make it to the second building, and Ghost doesn't like it. Anticlimax or what? So they walk all the way back home, and that's it. They simply repeat these actions over and over again. Any idea where they could be going next? Oh, that reminds me, I asked you to name these bros last time, and we have a winning set of names. They will now be forever called Bill and Ted. Breathtaking names. If you don't know who Bill and Ted are, check in the comments. I'm sure you'll be told by a person wiser than me. Whilst looking for a future spot for the two henchmen, I checked back on their old homes. In retail, the store has not been updated this year, it usually becomes a spooky store. More on that very soon. But over at the authority, there is something you need to see. Inside the top layer, where the shadow henchman once lived, you know, with his shrine to Brutus, there's a new item here now. Midas's golden chair has returned. This chair has been around for a few seasons now. It was Midas's favorite chair in the meeting room before it was stolen, transported across a lake and put in someone's house. But it was so heavy that it broke through the floor. Then we saw it moved into storage before vanishing forever. Well, at least we thought it was forever because now it's back and it's waiting. Please hit me with your predictions now. There are a handful of chairs up here, but three in a row. Maybe Midas and Bill and Ted? Or it could be for the rightful king to return, Brutus. RIP, forever in our hearts. <laughs> Find out what happens next in the next update. So I mentioned the usual update to the map for Halloween, and it has begun. If you look around the map right now, the occasional house is dressed up with spooky llamas and spiders. There's even a trailer this year that's got involved with the festivities. And over the next few weeks, the whole neighborhood usually gets on board and gets in the spooky vibes. But where are they getting their decorations this year? I know you've already guessed it. The new superstore over at Holly Hedges is now confirmed to be a Halloween store named Heibu. Three weeks ago when the building was erected, we all guessed it would be for Halloween and Christmas, and we were right. Pat yourself on the back, those that guessed it. Inside, it is uh, far from opening day officially, but it does now have a set of tills, a basic kitchen, and a few desks, and of course, that sign. It looks like we'll be waiting for another update before the Halloween store is truly here. Hey, that reminds me, think the Storm King will return? I do hope so. I have the pickaxe he fears the most. Whoa, we're missing something huge. Huh? 
Hut Watch Baby. The hut which keeps on giving continues to give. Can you spot the difference this time around? Well, first the truck is still waiting to be moved around 20 weeks later. Staff issues in Fortnite. The hut itself though has a fresh lick of varnish to all the wood, but the biggest update is on the floor. Mm-hmm, check this out, that tiled floor goodness. Complete with more cracks than a nudist beach. The Hut Watch POI slowly takes over the map and one day, I'm praying that this will be linked to the story somehow. One day. Who's with me? Just me. Yay. Ooh, speaking of storyline updates, we had a tiny update to the story of Thor, his forever vanishing memory, and the entire Marvel arch. Galactus is now close enough to be spotted in the sky and recognized as the World Eater. I couldn't get the camera any closer than this, sadly, but I'm sure he'll be even closer next update. And rest assured, before the final battle, I'll recap the entire story because sometimes it can feel as if there is no story, but there is. It's just hidden away. We can find it. The other storyline we followed revolves around the gnome population, led by our lord and saviour Graham the Gnome. Last month we saw a mystery slurp juice salesman arrive at the island, he gathered an audience and was immediately blown up by his rival. We jumped into action to rescue the other gnomes threatened with explosive barrels and then wiped out their propaganda attempts too. And finally we found the man himself in a basement, where all weirdos live. Where do you live? And this was another character I asked you to name. This was a landslide victory. You guys decided to call him the Nominator, as he's half robot Terminator dude and half gnome. Good choice. I'm not sure if it's Nominator or G Nominator, so I'll just keep using both. Hope that's okay with you. The Nominator is destined to eradicate the island of gnomes, but this week he's gone missing, no longer in his secret lair. But around the world, his presence is still known. Over by the Dam Turbine is a suspicious piece of artwork. A graffiti tag for the Nominator made by his robotic minions. Are there more to be found? What could this mean and where is the Nominator? By the way, if you do visit this spot in game, you'll be rewarded with XP and a clue to the next step of the story. Most wanted. I guess we are tracking him down now. Let me know if you find him. He must pay for what he did. The major update today was a series of smaller micro updates I wanted to make sure we documented. The first of which is the addition of Rocket League to Fortnite in this weird and wonderful crossover. Over at Ferris Bueller's house, you know, the place with so many fallen cranes it's hard to explain to someone who doesn't play Fortnite. Yeah, here you'll find a trophy cabinet with in-game items. Over the walls are posters and downstairs in the bedroom there's even more goodies to find. I like these smaller updates, the small nods to other things. Here you can also find a unique vehicle donned with Rocket League info, another nice touch. And if you get close enough to the trophy cabinet, you'll hear the music from the game. I know it's not a big deal, but it's worth the recognition. GG Mr. or Mrs. Epic Developer. Ah oh, damn, I just assumed someone's gender. Please don't cancel me internet. And the update I wanted to show you last time, but Stark's POI was completely messed up and I couldn't. You've already seen where I'm going with this because the Stark bus is in game right now, taking us into each and every match. But this has been foreshadowed for weeks. After bringing up his own POI into the game, Stark began upgrading the battle bus first with simple blueprints. He then took his work into the garage. A small oil drop gave us the location to keep an eye on. And then the battle bus began to change. Last week it was completed in the garage before it was updated and used in the game a few days ago. This is the kind of series of updates that really impresses me. Look at all the steps to get to this point. Crackshot's cabin becomes a barn from Iron Man 2, which then is used to design interdimensional travel, which then creates those beacons, which are then switched on, which then grow in power and bring us a new POI. Stark then looks at the battle bus and plans a change, then implements that change and then boom, he's ready. This is mind blowing. And what is his next step? Just look in the sky. All these micro updates are preparing us for battle with the Eater of Worlds, your mum. Hi Karen. 
So, so there we have it. Week 8, Fortnite Season 4. How did I do? What did I miss? Please let me know in the comments. Like usual, I'll be in there stalking. It's not weird, it's just how I spend my days. On screen now are people who I owe a great thanks to. Using my code, even though my Fortnite content isn't regular enough right now, I'm going to try and fix that. My apologies. I really appreciate what you do for me, and I feel like I have my enthusiasm back now, and I have two more videos planned over the next week. If I haven't replied to your Twitter DM yet, I'm sure by now you know I will. It just takes me a while to get to things. Thanks in advance for supporting me. Right, I will do my best to get out of your ear holes right now. Cheers for sticking around till the end. I'm Adam, you're awesome. I'll see you next time.